it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my first fall centered video and I honestly could not be more excited about it. At first I was a little hesitant with summer ending and like winter looming, but you know, I've gotten over it. I've re-remembered that fall is in fact my very favorite season of the year every year, so I'm excited. This video I'm going to be chatting about my most anticipated releases coming up for the fall. These are going to be books coming out between um, August, September, and October. I will be doing a, another video near the tail end of the year for books coming out November and December because there are a lot of them. That's what I discovered when researching for this video. I needed to do this in two different versions. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. First book I'm going to talk about is the Harry Potter Illustrated Edition for book number four. This comes out in early October and I am counting down the days until this comes out. I have absolutely loved these illustrated editions for the Harry Potter novels. They're beautiful, they're whimsical, and it just adds like a whole new experience to something I already know and love so much. Um, that being said, I am currently in the midst of my reread to Harry Potter leading up to the fourth book, so I can just like immediately jump in and then I'll carry on with books five, six, and seven. But yeah, I am just so thrilled that they started to make these and this fourth one, I just have a feeling is gonna be ginormous, perhaps weighing like 20 pounds. It's such a big book and I'm just wondering how many illustrations he can fit into this novel, but yeah. This is the first book I'm definitely mentioning and probably one of the ones I'm most excited about. The next book I'm going to talk about is Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. This is book two to the spin-off series of the Remnant Chronicles. It's called like Dance of Thieves. I read the first one right when it came out last year. I really, really enjoyed it, so I'm really excited for the second installment. This is a series set again in the same world as the Remnant Chronicles, just set a few years in the future. Um, it basically follows like this settlement set outside of the jurisdiction of a lot of the political dealings. We can almost kind of relate it to like a fantastical gang type setting or like a mob setting and one of our main characters sent to this uh, establishment to kind of like investigate and then a whole bunch of stuff happens from there. There's romance, there's intrigue. The end of the first book ended with quite the bang so I'm really excited to see how the story continues in book number two. I really really thought it was a really fresh extension to this fantasy world so pumped for this and this comes out in early August. Next book I have to talk about is Serpent and Dove and this comes out in early September. This is a witch centered fantasy novel which I am very pleased with. Um, I don't know, I always love a good witch tale, but it basically follows our main character who has kind of fled her homeland and forsaken all use of magic to try to blend into the background to avoid being like hunted. And we also follow our main character who's part of this establishment that is, you know, hunting witches. And I think these people cross paths, love to hate perhaps, we shall see, serpent and dove. So I don't know, I'm excited to see how this one pans out. Early reviews are strong and I'm hoping for a nice like angsty romance with some solid fantasy thrown in there. So we shall see. Next is Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. This is the highly anticipated sequel to Carry On, which is a really beloved and very entertaining uh, fantasy <coughs> story. If you're not familiar with the Carry On series, it basically started in one of Rainbow Rowell's other novels called Fangirl, where we follow a main character who writes fan fiction around this series that is very, very similar to Harry Potter. Um, that book was super popular, and Rainbow Rowell decided to actually make the book that she's writing fan fiction for real and she wrote a book following those characters and um so the first novel carry on is set in like their last year of school at this magical school and um, you kind of follow their antics and adventures simon snow and baz there is an adorable romance that occurs within the story and the sequel i think is just carrying on their adventures it's a wonderful series because it definitely plays on the nostalgia of its inspiration, which is Harry Potter, but it's very much its own story and it's super sweet, really entertaining. I feel like I need to give Carrie on a reread before I can read Wayward Son, but nonetheless, very excited for it. Next is by far and away one of my most anticipated books of the year, and that is Five Dark Fates. This is a Three Dark Crowns novel, book number four. I have been reading one of these books every year since the first one came out. I am obsessed with this series. I feel like I ceaselessly talk about this series on my channel since I started reading it, but it's so good. I feel like this might be the final novel. I'm not sure, but I just have so many questions, so I can't wait to pick this book up. But this is a super dark, a YA fantasy novel set on this mysterious mystical island that follows three sisters. Basically there is magic and there's also a political system where the matriarch of this island has triplets and these triplets each have a different type of magical power corresponding with different clans that have political power within the island itself. 
Um, they're basically raised separately from each other because they're trained to one day kill each other off and the winner takes the crown. So it's very dark, very conniving, and we follow these sisters basically through this process of killing each other, protecting each other, navigating this very wild world of politics, and it's amazing. Each one has been awesome. I can't wait for the fourth book, so yes. Next book on my list is The Deathless Girls by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This just sounds like a really dark fantasy folklore fairy tale retelling that's really up my alley. The catch line is gothic, intoxicating, feminist, darkly provoking, and deeply romantic. Described as a breathtakingly imagined retelling of Dracula's wives, I honestly don't need to know anything more than that. A gothic, feminist, retelling, following Dracula's wives, the cover is beautiful, Sounds dark and eerie, sign me up, say no more, pre-ordered. Next is a book that sounds both dark, fantastical, and like oddly funny. It is called Gideon the Ninth. And again, another book I kind of have to just read the blurb for because it's just, I couldn't vocalize it or describe it any better than what is written for it already. Um, the Emperor needs necromancers. The Ninth Necromancer needs a swordsman. Gideon has a sword, some dirty magazines, and no more time for undead bull bleep. Um, it just sounds like a really bizarre, funny story, kind of combining some like great traditional dark elements of fantasy, but kind of kicking it up a notch and adding some really awesome new elements. It also includes things like lesbian necromancers. It's set in a solar system of swordplay and cutthroat politics. I think this is like a science fiction fantasy novel. I don't know. It sounds bizarre and awesome. And so I'm really intrigued by it. Also early reviews are super strong, so we shall see. Next is another super exciting novel, and that is The Empire of Dreams by Ray Carson. This is the fourth book to the Girl of Fire and Thorn series, which I read and loved many years ago. One of my first favorite YA fantasy trilogies of all time. Ray Carson is one of my favorite authors. Love that series. So I honestly didn't even know this book was coming out until I was researching for this video and I got so excited. So this is definitely one that I'm probably also most anticipating. I'm pumped. I'm curious to know kind of like where it's set, how it will be like set in the world. It's said to be a standalone novel, so I think it's kind of set in the future after the end of some of the things that happened in the original trilogy. But oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I can't wait to just jump right in. It honestly might make me feel like I need to reread some stuff. And I'm also now just realizing this is coming out in 2020. So Goodreads really led me astray there with their list of releases. All right. <laughs> Add it to your 2020 list. Next is a book also coming from an author that I read many, many years ago, so I'm excited to see a new book coming out from him, and that is Angel Mage by Garth Nix. This is said to be, for right now anyway, a standalone novel, but we'll see, because I honestly don't believe any declarations of such in the YA fantasy world. Um, but this basically has to do with, like, angels and magic. This basically follows, I'm not sure the main character, perhaps more the main villain and, like, fate maker in this story, very all-powerful being. She rises from her sleep at the beginning of this novel and she honestly doesn't really care much for her followers any longer. She kind of views them as pawns, a part of this like grander scheme. We particularly follow four pawns that have never met each other until the start of this novel and their fates kind of become intertwined. This description is very detailed but also very vague on how this novel will unfold, therefore making it very intriguing. I'm obviously a big fan of Garth Nix, so I'm interested to see this new novel, and I'm sure it'll be like very rich in its storytelling and its fantasy setting um, and very detailed, which I'm looking forward to. So we shall see on my list coming out in early October. Next book I have to mention is The Burning White by Brent Weeks. This is book number five to the Lightbringer series, which is one of my all-time favorite series. I've obviously read the first four books very quickly back to back, I want to say in college. I've been waiting for the fifth book to come out for about three years now, so I'm very, very excited. Another series I'm definitely going to be needing to do like a bit of a, not a reread, but a refresh before picking out this new book. But this world has one of the most interesting magic systems that I love so much. It's centered around the concept of light and using it. It's based on the spectrum, so the more colors you can see in the spectrum, the more powerful you are, and different colors have like different types of powers, but the trade-off is the more you use it, the sooner you die. So there's like a 
price when it comes to power. But yeah, I love this book series so much. It's definitely one that constantly raises the stakes. Characters are scheming all of the time, and I'm just trying to keep up. But the, I'm really excited to see this next book in this series. I'm not sure if this is the last one or not. Um, oh, it is the conclusion. So that's stressful. So I definitely feel like I need to make sure I am oriented in this world before that one comes out, but this comes out at near the end of October. And the last book I'm going to talk about is Grave Maidens. This is the first book to a dark fantasy duology. Um, and this one just sounds like, again, containing a lot of elements to stories that I personally love. It basically follows three sisters that are destined to fulfill this prophecy in their land, which basically states that one of the sisters is going to be chosen to die with the emperor at his passing. And the other sisters obviously desperate to save um, their sister from this fate, basically kind of get entwined and find themselves at the center of various different politics in this land. And they do this by trying to save the ruler's life, which I think is like an interesting approach to preventing this thing from happening. So I'm very curious. I always really love a sister tale, particularly one set in fantasy. This sounds like a really interesting world. And again, early reviews are super strong. And I don't know, it sounds, it's definitely piqued my interest. So we shall see. Alrighty guys, those are my most anticipated fall releases. Let me know down below some books you're really looking forward to coming out this fall, as I would love to know and add to my TBR. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.